Hi, everybody. Lee here. Thank you for watching and or listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee. I'm so excited that you've chosen to come and listen and watch today as we talk about life, leadership, and legacy. So if you haven't done it yet, subscribe today on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. Um, I think you'll be greatly encouraged and inspired to make a difference in the world around you. Uh, today, I have a very, very, very special guest. Uh, he is a champions coach. Come on. <laughs> He's a great guy and, and someone who has a lot of leadership experience and will inspire you to make a difference in your life. So today, let's welcome to the podcast and vlog, my guy, Kyle Sullivan. What's up, brother? What's up, Lee? Man, I am excited for this. It is going to be amazing. Um, as I told you before we hit record, I, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing with this. This Your best days are just in front of you. And so I'm excited to be here, brother. All right. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate you saying that. So um, let's jump right in. I want to talk a little bit about your story. Um, what okay. I know about you is you're a Southern guy like me yep. uh, from Louisiana. So, you know, how how has your background and your history kind of shaped you, man? Whew, okay. So I definitely think uh, being from Louisiana, being from the South, um, you know, it just teaches you how to relate to people, how to um, be able to be nice, be cordial, be kind. And then my story is a roller coaster. Um, I mean, the, the spark notes of it is, you know, lived in Louisiana for 21 years in high school. Um, got started wrapped up in a party in and um, was going to church at this time, but I had, I got really good at playing the two sides of the fence and um, that just intensified all the way until I was 21, hit rock bottom, got jumped at a drug deal and um, called up a friend of mine, mentor and said, I need effing Jesus. I just didn't abbreviate anything. <laughs> and uh, that led me down a, a path of getting my degree in Christian studies, um, going on and being a pastor for 11 years and now running a coaching and consulting company called Unleash the Champ. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. I mean, you you know, your unique life experiences tend to inform how you operate in the world, right? 100%. And so that's, that's, that's great. And, and you are another story of how somebody went through a lot and then said, hey, I need to make this life change. Um, go to the next space. So you kind of mentioned that you have some exposure and experience in ministry, but you also, you know, have a consulting company, which, you know, we'll, get, we'll talk about both. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that ministry background. Uh, you have been in, a, a, as I've known you for what, two, about two or three years. Yep. And in the time that I've known you, you have been a part of some large organizations. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very dynamic organizations, right? Um, 100%. What, what what were some of the things that you learned in that process? What were some of like the nuggets that you gained by being in those type of organizations? Man, I see. So I worked at Life Church for about seven years. Mm -hmm. And that's a for anybody listening that don't know, it's a it's a church based out of Oklahoma, has 36 locations, 11 states. When I came on the team, we had 15 locations in six states, I think. So I got to be a part of a lot of that. Um, growth from just as a staff member and got to launch, help launch a few campuses. Um, and I think what I learned is what's possible in, in a ministry, because I had interned at a church that was like one church, one location, yeah. two services, yeah. and then being able to see, one, the importance of leadership in large organizations, um, and then be, most recently getting to work at Transformation Church and being able to see the faith, the belief, the, um, you know, as Pastor Michael would say, the crazy faith, being 51% sure that something's going to work and just going for it. Um, and, and just being able to say, okay, people over processes, it, you, you have to constantly be casting vision to, to let people know the direction you're going, the, the, the course that you're taking. And then really, you just have to go for it. I mean, we read stories in the Bible where there's just massive amounts of faith. And we're like, oh, yeah, that's warm and fuzzy. No, like faith is scary. Faith is um, lonely at times. And and so I think being a part of those organizations has, it 
it unleashed, you know, my company's called Unleash the Champ. It unleashed the leadership bug in me where I said, okay, like this was already kind of in me and my past experiences developed some of that. But being a part of large organizations that led thousands, if not tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of yeah. people being able to know what it takes to run an organization like that is invaluable. Yeah, I, I think that's so good. I want to dig into something you started, you, you kind of touched on. Um, you kind of talked about uh, uh, how these organizations in a way um, really just like unlock something in you, right? That, 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 that curious curiosity. You know, I, in the time I've known you, Kyle, you've always seemed like a very curious person to me anyway. You, you, you pull, you always pull the, I'm not saying much, but I'm watching every single thing that's moving. Yep. So like, what do you think a curiosity comes from? Like, is it just something you just noticed that you had as a kid or like, where, yes. where did that start for you? Lee, it's so funny that you said, uh, you used that word because when people say, Kyle, what's your superpower? I say curiosity. Yeah. yeah. And it's from a from a child. I think part of it, being an only child, I had to find stuff to do. Um, so I was just constantly like, well, me throwing the ball in the air. It's <laughs> wow. I didn't have that struggle, bro. <laughs> I didn't have so it. It, it's people like, oh my gosh, only child, so awesome, which it was. I didn't have to share nothing. But it, I think, and for me, I was always curious, like, um, you know, I, I learned a couple years ago when I was going through some of my old school stuff, um, I al always had a passion for learning. In kindergarten, I read 147 books. Wow. Wow. And it, it said goal 20, Kyle 147. Wow. So, so my dad my parents would always say like, I was always wanting to, why was my favorite question? And, and so, well, why does this work this way? What, why, why do we have to do it this way? Which as a kid got me in a lot of trouble because my parents were like, if you ask why one more time, now it serves me great because I, well, why are we doing this? Why do we want to take that route? It, it serves me well, but definitely curiosity is something that has always been a part of me. And if I hear something that I'm like, huh, I wonder how that works. I'll just go into a rabbit hole and and learn enough about it to be dangerous. And they go, okay, that's good. Now let's move on. <laughs> that's really great. I, I, I think that that's powerful because I think sometimes our greatest gifts in, in, in a different stage of our life can be a problem at one. You know, I realized as a kid for me too, man, like, my problem was I talked too much. Uh, I would always get in trouble for talking too much, just just running my mouth. But now my like this is the thing that I do, and this is the way that I connect with people. So you know, I I completely understand <laughs> that that transition, Kyle, and how that is played in your life in a significant way. So you you were touching on that curiosity because I kind of want to stay there a little bit. You have used that curiosity to have to learn a lot. Um, you probably have taken, you probably taken a lot of, you know, personal assessments and stuff like that, knowing yeah. you, yeah. um, yeah, uh, recently, well, the credit union I work for, we all are required to take strength finders, right? Oh yeah. Um, by Lee Roth. I'm like, yeah. as he's talking, I'm like your number one, obviously is learner <laughs> or learning. So it's competition. Really? Yeah. So my top three are, are competition achiever and learner. But that makes sense. Yeah. They, they so, all just kind of work in it's tandem. Like, it's like, I want to be the best. I want to achieve the most. Yes. And I want to learn everything. Yes. Yes. I'm like, there, there's no balance in me, <laughs> which is, it, is detrimental at times. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and, and you don't want to be a workaholic. I, I think that there, there's a, you got to create space in your life to, to preserve yourself so that you can actually learn more and actually be available to the stuff that you have to do outside of work. But that's not what we're here to talk about, right? So let's kind of move on. But um, you were talking about your expertise as a pastor. So kind of just give me some positional things in that. Um, what, what I know of you, I know you were, you know, what's in line of goals would be a campus pastor. You have been a coordinator and leading leadership uh, 
part parts yep. of a churches and now it's kind of developed into you starting the coaching business. So yeah, what what are some of your what are you, what are some of the skills you honed in on during that time? One hundred percent. So I would say during that eleven years, um, I got the opportunity to communicate on stage a lot, um, and so communication was definitely a, a, a skill that was developed and honed. Um, leading people, building teams was definitely something. Um, and then overall leadership development, because you mentioned some, you know, personality profiles and, and tests and things. I mean, I've done Strength Finder, Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, DISC, um, Emotional Intelligence, EQ360, like being able to lead through all of those. Um, it, it just gave me a love for helping people grow, which then led to what I do now as a coach and consultant is it's the same thing that I do and I did in ministry. It's just in a different context. I, I think that's good. You know, you a lot of skills are translatable. The yes. the more you build the the foundation of your skill set, the more it makes you valuable in certain ways. You know, it's interesting. I was reading a um reading an article, it actually was talking about that. It was talking about how, and I was doing a presentation earlier this year, and it was, it was specifically talking about just don't get, gain a skill, build a skill set. Because if you yep. build a skill set, it actually makes you more valuable to any organization or any company. So now you are in this new venture, right? You're in yes. this new space where you are consulting and doing leadership stuff. You know, how are you cultivating vision? How are you cultivating culture. I don't know. Do you have any employees yet? No, I have some freelancers, but no, okay. no one full-time yet. Um, I think for me, it started initially with just make it, create the vision, write it down, make it plain. I mean, that's Bible. Yeah. And so um, a lot of prayer went into, okay, what do we want to stand for? And I'll be honest, man, in, let's see, what's this been like six and a half, seven months uh, full-time? it's continuously refined to where now seven months in, I'm like, okay, I feel like I got a pretty good handle on what it can be, where it needs to go and, and where, and so really with creating culture, again, it starts with me. I got to live it. And then as I bring people on, even my freelancers, I walk them through where they fit in the greater vision because initially right now, um, you know, I have friends of mine that are really talented that, you know, I'm like, hey, I, I can't pay you what you're worth right now, but I will. And yeah. I was I was just in Miami last week and um, Damon John was speaking and he said when he first started, he paid people in vision. Wow. And he, he said, you know, initially he I mean, he wanted to pay people what it was worth. But he just said, hey, if you stick with me, it will be worth it. And I promise you, this is where we're going. This is how I see you playing a part. And it was really convicting because I felt like almost I, if I was, if I asked people for something, it was almost like taking advantage of them. Look, I completely feel that. Like there is, there is trying, it's hard trying to find a balance between trying to get people to buy into something and hey i need to get this done <laughs> and, I, and i don't know how to do it you know even with me with leading with right now bro i'm doing everything with leading right and that takes time and talent and you know me trying to work out my schedule to do things but yeah it it, it is something fundamental and i think that's interesting that you bring that up kyle i think Paying people with a vision, that's a powerful concept to teach people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something super powerful. And I mean, it, it obviously has made Damon John extremely successful, right? Right, right. Yeah. He's a billionaire. Right. <laughs> right. But that's, that's great. That's great. Um, so kind of talk to me a little bit about just the last seven months. I mean, you have been a part of the organization. You're now doing something on your own. What, what are some of the things that you feel like, how, well, actually, first of all, how did you look at stepping into that? Because there's a lot of people right now who are in organizations, they're comfortable, they, they 
have been doing something for so long. So, so they're so used to a certain level of standard and different like that. But what was that like for you stepping into this new thing and just saying, hey, I'm going to bet on myself? Yeah, great question. I will say um, I didn't know this, but the transition started October 5th, 2019. Hmm. That was the day my daughter was born. And, you know, for anybody listening, watching, that's a parent, the moment you see your child for the first time, everything changes. And for me, it was like, okay, she's born in October. Everything's going great. I absolutely love what I get to do at Transformation Church. We're growing. You know, we got all this big stuff planned. 2020 is going to be our year. It's going to be amazing. COVID. Everybody comes home. My wife's working from home. I'm working from home. And I'll be honest, the first few weeks, I was pissy. Just out of my routine. All of us were disrupted. You know, the longest two weeks ever. And just, but what the silver lining was, is that at the time, Piper was four and a half months old. And so us being at home, me not having stuff to do on the weekend, I got to see all of the milestones, see with my eyes, not after the fact, not on video. I got to see these milestones in her life. And when the decision was made to come back to the office and we're all on a, you know, and I'm sure there's folks from, TC watching this, so you're gonna you're gonna get the behind the scenes, people. Um, Pastor Mike's saying we're coming back to the office, and we're all on a muted Zoom call. I do what everybody else does, and if you're listening to this right now, I'm acting like I'm celebrating, but I knew it was as God spoke to me as clear as He. Ha- very few times he's spoken this clear to me. It said, you won't be back there as a staff member. Now let's let's give context. Wow. At this time, my daughter is about six and a half months old, seven months old. And so all that comes with that, I'm sitting here in this chair, in this room, and I'm like, God, hold up. I'm going to need you to run that one back for me, Jesus. And it's real, dog. <laughs> yes. That's real. And I'm like, hold on. No, this this not on. You you that was meant for someone else. And I talked to my wife and she said, "Yeah, I I think you need to do this." And I'm like, I needed you to say, no, you're crazy. Don't do this. It's a great job. It's an amazing organization. You love it. What you're doing is great. And she said, yeah, I mean, we got, you know, we got some money saved up and yeah. I, I believe that you could do this. Oh, okay. So I, I talked to the leadership team at TC and I will tell you, man, it was so celebrated. It was so encouraged. I mean, obviously it was like a little bit of, dang, I hate this. And I was like, me too. I I left the place that I was at. I loved it. I was pissed at God, but I just knew he told me to move. And, you know, I think that's an important thing about faith is sometimes we're like, we just have faith in God and he sustains us. No, sometimes he pisses us off. Well, <laughs> Ooh, we, but that doesn't dictate our obedience. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, middle of July, again, another big moment at this desk. I'm sitting here with the computer that I just bought because the last 11 years churches have gifted me computers to use. So I I didn't have a computer and how was I going to do calls with no computer? So I buy a computer and I went, well, what do I do now? How do I put my hope in action? How do I make the vision work? So that's kind of the behind the the, the curtain of that. I, I, I'm 
I appreciate you sharing that because I think um, when people watch this or listen to this, they're going to realize that to be successful or to bet on yourself is so hard. Yeah. It's not as easy as people think it is. Like, you know, <laughs> even in bad situations, people are kind of to some degree like, well, at least I got a job. At least I, you know, right. You know, people have that mentality when it comes down to that. And I think you having the courage to say, I'm going to move forward and go for something that is unfamiliar to me. And that's even more interesting because you were in a good situation. Well, it was fantastic. So, right, right. So, so you're having this whole thing where it's like, bro, I'm, it's not like my bills not getting paid and I, you know, it wasn't bad. It was actually right. a good situation. And so I, that's very, very powerful for you to talk about. I mean, kind of go, kind of share a little bit more about, so you made the transition, you, you stepped out and did it. What was it like for you when you first started out, like just really pursuing it, like really looking for clients, really selling yourself, really getting out there and saying, hey, hey, I'm Kyle. I got 11 years of experience in this space. Hire me. What, how has that been for you? And what is that like for you? Pick an emotion. It has been, you know, and, and I think the temptation for anybody starting something new, especially in a way that I did, I made it super public is people ask out of a good heart, the temptation to say, it's amazing, man. It's so awesome. It's that, man, up and to the right, never been better. Amazing. But I'll be honest with you. Have we had moments like this? 100%. Yeah. Is it mostly up and to the right? It is. But there's also been times where we're paying, there's also been a, a month, not many, a month. We paid our mortgage on the last day of the month. And I was calling saying, hey, I, it's going to get to you before the month turns. And I had, I've not even had to do that since I turned 18 and, and or 19 and had an apartment by myself, much wow. less with a family. Wow. Never missed a payment. Never had to, you know, worry about anything like that. And it took like even coming into the start of the year, you, you know, my wife and I were like, all right, hey, we're going to play a fun game. It's called spend as little as possible. No, that's real. That's real. <laughs> that's real. Because we knew it and our, our obedience sustained us through the times where I would sit here and just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. This, what was I thinking? Like, God, did, did I hear you correctly? Like, is this actually what you want me to do? Because I've even been tempted, man. I'm, I'm just pulling a curtain back. I've been tempted to look at, like, I know I could get a church job again. I Like, it would be easy. The churches that I've worked for, the, the success I've had, I could probably <laughs> pick my place. Right, the credibility. Yeah, and I have good friends in my life that said, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 uh-uh, get off. Unless, you, unless you're looking for people to help, get off. Get off the job boards. And there's been moments like that, man. And again, I'm not saying it has been mostly, mostly great, but there's definitely moments where, and I think it's important for those watching and listening to understand is that you could be right in the middle of obedience and feel Un uh, feel unprepared, feel afraid, feel fearful, but it doesn't negate your obedience. And I think that's the thing that I'm like, I wake up every day and for the last seven or so months, bro, it doesn't even feel like I work. Like I always heard people say, wow. man, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I was like, I love what I do, but I feel like I go to work. But I think there's something about building, you know, and entrepreneurship is not for everybody. And that's real. And, 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 and let me say this real quick and I'm going to let you finish. That's real because some people think in order for them to be their most successful, they need to make a rash move like that. 
Right. But but success really is you being the most yourself. Right. <laughs> Whether right. you're working for an employer or you are your employer. 100%. Right, I just wanted 100%. to make that note. But as you were saying. No, and I think, I think the timing is important too. Not our preferred timing, but our timing of obedience. Because if I would have, say I wouldn't, would have, I would have done this two years ago and I would have never been a part of Transformation Church, there would be gaps in my business that I wouldn't have. Had. Wow. 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 Because I, I, I tell people, you know, because it, on, on paper, it looks, man, like, was something wrong? You only stayed there a little over 18 months. And I'm like, I was as shocked as y'all are. <laughs> like, I, I didn't leave one place to come to another for 18 months. But there, in that 18 months, what, what God did to refine me, to... Uh, plant deeper roots to to put new seed like I apologize we're getting churchy here but like it really is what it is and just saying like I would have been incomplete if I hadn't been a part of that ministry yeah yeah and I would be an incomplete business owner I'd be an incomplete coach I'd be an incomplete consultant and I wouldn't be able to help people at the level that I'm able to help them now if I did not have all of the moments in my life that led to this. Yeah, I think you, that's such a great point, Kyle, because too often we look at our stories and we can only see them in the space we're in right, right now, right? You know, that, that, that old saying hindsight is 20, 20. That's a real thing because you start realizing that if I look back at my life, I can see how important this one thing was, and then this thing was, and then this other thing was, and then I become more engaged with the reality that, hey, it had not all this stuff happened, I probably wouldn't be ready. You know, those are situations that just happened to me recently where um, had not I gone through this men's group that I was in for like a year and a half, I would have responded completely different than the way I responded. Like, I didn't realize how much more compassionate I was or more, much more aware that like, wait, there's so much stuff going on with this individual. Like experience has a, has a profound impact on our perspective in the world and makes us more aware of how we need to approach situations, you know? And I, and I'm, and I think a level of appreciation, you know, and, and, and by you saying that that's so interesting because it made me think about how even in my own life, how like, I wonder if I had gotten my degree earlier or I wonder if I got my master's earlier or I wonder if I did something else earlier, would I be mature enough or would I have the perspective that I have just about life to be able to go through the things that I've gone through and make some of the decisions that I made. So kind of staying in there a little bit, you, you were getting at like some of those setbacks or, or perceived setbacks. Right, right. What what have you learned in how to use that as fodder for how you consult? Yeah, I mean, a setback is something to be appreciated. A setback is something to be. Uh, it allows for reflection. Um, I think about you know, one of my all time favorite quotes is by Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Bro, that's real, <laughs> bro, that's real. <laughs> and you, you see it, you can, and again, like a lot of my analogies that I use as a coach and consultant is in sports, cause that's what I love. You think about the moment, you know, let's take a fighter where they're all good, they're, they're bouncing around and then that first pop, Right in, the, right in the mouth. You can tell how the rest of the fight's going to go by their eyes. Well. <laughs> yep. And you, as the person watching it, you could go, oh, it's over. <laughs> oh, all that, all those months of training, out the door. And then what happens after that 
shows how prepared the person actually is, how much they're actually locked in to doing what's necessary to be successful. And so I've added a little bit, not that Mike Tyson needs anything added to him, but everybody has a plan till they get hit in the mouth. So start to like the taste of your own blood. And it may be extreme for some people, but I think about if you get popped like that, what's going to happen? Most often your lips going to bleed. And I think about all the movies, all the things of the fight where the big burly guy, there's a swing and he just goes, he wipes his mouth, rubs his fingers together and he just looks at the blood and then looks back at the opponent. That's how we have to be when it comes to setbacks. It's not that punches aren't gonna come. It's not that setbacks aren't gonna happen, but when they hit you in the mouth, start to enjoy the taste of your own blood because that means that you are prepared to move forward. That means that your training, mm -hmm. your preparation has yeah. made you where you can actually fight. Wow, 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 so it's great perspective. I, I, I need to taste my own blood. Even though this is going to be weird, uh, but but I need to get used to the taste of my own blood. You know, I man, I think that that's such an encouragement to people to realize that like whether you are entrepreneur or working in your career and you know you're moving up in a company, if they block your opportunity for career advancement, don't stop trying. Don't stop right. applying for more jobs within the company. Don't stop applying. Because I think that some people get into the space and this is something that's just real and I'm gonna let you respond because I, I realize you just thought about something. But someone get in that space and then we start getting knocked down and we're like, man, I guess this is not for me. You know. So I, I literally just read a quote the other day that I was like, this is so simple. Why, ha why don't we think this way? It said when someone or something closes a door, open it back open. That's how doors work. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's like, hold on, hold on. What? Because we think that doors, we forget like if a door closes, that there's not two handles on the door. Yes. Yes. And it's like, just open the door back up. Yes. Now, depending on what door it is and how, but like the opportunity for the door to open doesn't, doesn't go away when it's closed. Yes. So put your hand on the knob and turn it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think there's gonna be a lot of turning after they listen to this episode. Um, Come on. If you have not done this yet, I need you to go to Kyle's social media I need you to apply. I need you to do take whatever assessment he has for Unleash the Champ and get you some help. Because what he's talking about is some real stuff. We got to learn how to do that very thing, bro. It, and open that door again. Oh, Kyle. Oh my gosh. I never that like that's so simple, but it it's like hitting me in so many different ways. I'm tasting my own blood. Um, it's like hitting me so many ways because of the reality is that like we can do it again and I even think about this all the time like okay if they don't see it now obviously at some point they're gonna get that I, I'm the answer to your problem you keep outsourcing stuff hello right the, the value is sitting there I kind of I, I, I'm kind of staying right there because I, I it made me think about something how can people continuously show themselves as valuable in organizations and actually went push through that to say hey though you're not getting it now but i promise you if you listen to me you can possess the future how, how can people do that in a healthy and productive way and it doesn't become you know very uh, uh what's the right word uh annoying <laughs> right so i think that's a super important question um, because if you want to, if you want to lead when you're not in charge, cause that's, that's what you're asking. I think for me, I've always had, and always tried to teach people on my team, three objectives for you to gain influence and get, gain equity is to be the hardest worker, to be the best teammate 
and always honor leadership. Be the hardest worker, the best teammate, and always honor leadership. It's not, you will get more done by supporting others than telling people your ideas. Hmm. <laughs> so wow. I, was, I was just talking with a friend last night and through my time in leadership and different leadership roles, I never had the lead job. Like I was never like the lead pastor. I was never on an executive team, but yet I had influence because I just said, Hey, look, however I can serve. And I would always, and if you're listening here, always, always, always praise publicly. Praise publicly gives you equity to confront privately. I would make sure that if you're listening and you, you have a desire, like, man, I really think I could bring some value. I really think that I could be an asset to this organization. I really, man, I, I know they don't see it yet. Okay, great. That's fine. Are you serving your lead? Are you honoring the leadership? See. And that is something that I have not done well always in my leadership. I've thought, I've had pride. I thought, yeah. I mean, I could do this better. Yeah. And here's oh, the deal. I, I never said that, but I said it. Mm. Because I have this uh, uh, unique ability. I think a guy given ability to say a whole lot without saying a word. I it's all yeah, in my brother. face. Yeah, bro. Yeah, the same problem. <laughs> Cannot hide how I feel at all. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so there'd be times where I would just, I, I totally didn't agree with the direction. But you were never going to know it publicly. And people would ask me, because I didn't always do a great job of hiding, maybe when I heard the information, people people would ask me, hey, how do you, like, how do you really feel about that? You know, because people are weird like that. They're trying to, they're trying to pull you to their side. And I'm like, no, nah, man, it's going to be amazing. No, really. Like, what do you, like, isn't this crazy? Man, it's crazy. Awesome. Yeah. Because I knew that if I was ever going to be able to have the opportunity to give feedback, to ask clarifying questions, my leader needed to know that come hella high water, I was down for the for the direction they were leading. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's so much wisdom in what you just said. So much wisdom in what you just said. I think that is so hard for people to do in work. Like, it is very, that's very hard to do. I Listen, I, I can't tell you how many times this right here, boy, uh -huh. I, I, I'd be like, what? What, you know, I'm, I'm, I have to catch myself because that's such a real thing. Like, it's not something easy to do and just say, hey, I'm gonna honor my leader. Hey, I'm gonna show myself available. I'm just gonna walk in humility. I'm gonna continuously serve the vision yeah. that I said I was committed to. Yeah. That's I think, huge. I think something important is honoring leadership doesn't mean suppressing your feelings. Right. So right. when I got into ministry, Lee, I had a mentor tell me, you need, you need, you need people in your life. And again, this was when I was a pastor said, you need people in your life that can't divorce you, fire you or leave your church that you going to talk to. And those people, they get the raw words that you got to repent after version of a story. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because you need to have an outlet of people who can go, uh-huh, uh-huh, man, uh-huh, gosh, dude, what are you going to do? I don't know that. Okay, you done? I got people in my life that I could call still to this day, and I, and they're like, okay, cool, you got that out of your system? Yeah, okay. You, you want to know, you want to talk through some solutions? Yeah, I think I'm good now. Yeah. Because I think when I first heard that honor leadership, honor leadership, honor leadership, it was almost, I took it as like I could never question anything. Yeah. 
And that's not the case. It's that we, we think critically about the direction, about the vision, about our place in it, but we're not critical of the person giving it to us. Wow. Wow. That's such wisdom and great perspective on that. Because I think a lot of us are struggling with that at this particular moment, right? Because we're looking at organizations and the pandemic in a way for a lot of people revealed a lot of stuff about what businesses they were working for, how, how their CEOs or their executive leadership was operating their companies, wh what, who was the, who and what was the priorities? Yep. No, what, what, who do we see as valuable? And there is, there is enough, there was enough low hanging fruit. Let's be real. There's enough low hanging fruit to go there. Yep. Plenty of it. But what you're talking about is something that is, com is challenging me, you know, even in my own personal leadership of saying, okay, is this like, is it easier for me to, to rag on this or is it easier for me to stay above the fray and show myself as a leader and valuable in that situation? And to add to your point, you know, even though we don't need anything added to it, it just made me think of <laughs> something, Kyle, uh, of sometimes you also do that vertically, right? Because sometimes within organizations, we know how to honor up, but we have some issues with people that we're on the same level with. I understand yeah. you have to, you know, be honest with those people and you have to say, hey, listen, I don't agree with how we're doing this or I think we can approach this a little bit different. Like that is completely fine and okay, but sometimes there's a problem there. And then also there is a powerful thing and Pastor Mike always talked about, we honor up, we honor down, we all, all the way around. But the interesting thing about even saying that, for some leaders, they don't know how to honor down. Right. Because there's something within their character and within their uh, 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 personal life and their personal experience that they forget they were in that position at one point, right? So, yeah. so I, I want you to talk about that a little bit. How can leaders, whether, because I fundamentally believe everybody's a leader. I don't think that they, it, it is just a positional thing. I think every person has a capacity and level of leadership. What are some ways in which you think that leaders can do it on the same level and do it down. Because yeah. we, we always hear about the up, but we never yeah. hear enough about the same level and downward. Right. I think, I think I'll start with the down because, you know, I don't, you mentioned, you know, something in their character, you know, makes them where they can't do it. I think what you said on the back end is, is the key. They just forgot that they were once in that place. And probably had a harder time getting to where they're at than the person behind them are just because of how technology is, how fast business goes now, how fast. And so because it was hard for them, they think it has to be hard for everybody else to get to that seat. Yeah. 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 Well, business is changing. Yeah. Um, workplace environments are changing, um, moving from more of an authoritative um, to more collaborative moving from, you know, man at the top, everybody underneath to almost a lot of times more inverted triangle where that's where you will truly get your leadership is where you form a collective. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think leading down and leading side by side, it's how well do you know the people that you're beside and how well does the leader at the top know the people at the bottom? Yeah. It would be it would be simple things that I feel like built me equity of when I got like there'd be teams that I get on where I was campus team or otherwise. Um, and I, I'll even speak to like at TC, they did such a great job of celebration. And that builds equity so much with people. And so one of the things that I would do is over the course of 11 years is if, if I saw, this is very practical. So this is something that people can, when they hear this, they can take it and apply it. The very next day they're around people that they are working with. The next time you see somebody come in with a drink that you want to build equity with, 
make a note in your phone of what that drink was. And then wait a week or whatever and just go get that drink for them and say, hey, hey, I got this for you today. I hope you have a great day. I would, I would make a point if I saw a teammate come in with Starbucks, I'd make a point to have a seemingly insignificant interaction just so I could say, oh, okay, I see you with the Starbucks. What's your favorite drink? Oh, it's a white mocha, almond milk. Sugar-free that's vanilla. That's genius. <laughs> and I, that's oh, genius. Man, that's, that sounds amazing. Oh my gosh, I love any time that I can get over to Starbucks and I can get that. Okay, cool. Hey, have a great day. Hope it has a great morning. I would walk out where they couldn't see me, go to their contact because you can keep notes in someone's contact and I would just write Starbucks, white chocolate mocha, wow. almond milk, sugar-free vanilla. Wow. And so then it in this may open up a can of worms. I think that is key to leadership. And I have this, uh, this like fight club definition of leadership that I, this will actually be the first place publicly that I've said it. Well, this is an exclusive right here. An exclusive. <laughs> so I think the purest definition of leadership is manipulation with the right heart. You got to unpack that. <laughs> right. So, in, in, <laughs> right. So, manipulation, the definition of manipulation is to handle something or someone with extreme care and precision. Ow. So, everything about building equity is about doing things to serve someone in a skillful manner in yeah. hopes that you can get them going in a right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I use that too when I, when I do teachings and things for that shock factor of like, did he just say manipulation? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. But the caveat, the qualifier is with the right heart. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, okay, I'm going to make note of your favorite drink and I'm going to give it to you in hopes that we can have a deeper relationship. That activates the law of reciprocity, which allows for us to go, okay, hey, if they're going to be that, if they're going to be that intentional, then I'm going to be intentional about them. So I'm going to ask them about their family and then their kids and then that. And it builds rapport so that when yeah. you have to be collectively united, it's like, hey, that person's got my six. That person's got my back. Yeah. And so that's something super, super practical. I would, I would constantly be listening. And I would constantly be listening for things that people said in conversations. Oh, man, you know, oh, my, my husband and I, you know, we went on a went on a date night. Oh, cool. Where'd y'all go? Oh my God. We'd love to go to Charleston's. Cool. And I just logged that away. Or yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's about listening and a great way to lead across, lead down is to start with caring about the people that you get to yes. do life leadership yes. with. Yes. Yes. Because it's the age old slogan, the age old quote that people don't care what you know until they know you care. Yeah. Yeah. And again, yeah. learned this because I tried to come in a lot of times in my leadership, more times than I care to admit with what I know. Yeah. Hey, I know this. I know how to do this. I know. How, have we thought about doing this and this and this and this and this? And people are like, no. No, that, that's fine. We're going to just keep doing what we're doing. I'm like, but do you see that's not as fit? Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't have equity. Yeah. You, yeah. you can't, you can't advance any, any purchase and you can't advance anything without equity. And so it's, what are you doing to build that pocket change? What are you doing to fatten the account of personal equity with a person? 
So I think that's one thing. Another is champion things that are important to them. And that's in the same way of learning, of listening. If they have something that they're like, man, I'm really stressed about this. I'm really, how can I help? That goes back to hardest worker. Yeah. Teammate. Yeah. And yeah. there'd be times where I'd have to, and I, you know what? I can't do that. I'm slammed right now. Will you have any time for this tomorrow? Like, will you have anything that needs to be done before the due date that you, I can take off your plate and just have it done before you need it finished? You know, just things like that um, will will serve you a ton in building equity um, with people. And I think it's just understanding that it's it's people over processes, it's people over products, it's people over profit. It's it's like your if you get the people thing right, all of that other stuff will take care of itself. And so, and then uh, kind of one more thing to the uh peer level i think when you see someone doing something that's off culture you see somebody doing something that is outside of the vision you have to ask yourself am i the person to correct that Hmm. because a correction it again it goes back to the pocket change if I cast a check with my account and I don't have enough to cash that check, I'm now in deficit. Everything, like I, I, I run my life off of this. Everything we say should be true, but not every true thing should be said. Yes, yes. And this may not be someone else's preference and leadership. But there would be times where I would see somebody, I would notice something, I would feel like that's not, and I would choose to stay silent. I would choose not to say something because from my own internal assessment, it wasn't going to burn the ship. It wasn't going to blow everything up. But I wasn't the person that needed to bring correction. I wasn't the one that needed to uh, call out that behavior. Instead, I would go another way if I felt like, hey, is there anything to help with this? And through the conversation, start to ask questions. Yeah. Yes. It's what Dale Carnegie says, seek, seek to understand rather than be understood. Yes. yes. And so it's not that it just takes longer. And yes. longer and, and, and more of a process and a journey to correction, people don't like. They're just like, I just want to tell them what they did. No, yeah. no, no, stop it. Yeah. You'll build more equity with people if you can help them see and come to their own conclusion of the deficiency or the out of alignment, then you come in hot. And yeah. just, ah. yeah, I, I think that's so good. And, you know, you just gave me a whole campaign strategy when I someday run for office. Anyways, uh, Come on. <laughs> you got my vote. <laughs> right. But but it won't be here in Tulsa. Anyways, uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But <laughs> but man, I, I, I think everything you said was so good. I have nothing to add on that. So I'm, I'm going to just move the conversation along a little bit. Um, but and I got the, these last few questions. You just gave us so much wisdom in what you just said, because I think that we all have to recognize the value that we can bring to any organization, but it's having the right perspective. And I think that's really what you're pushing us to understand is it got you have to have the right perspective. So one of my last questions for you, Kyle, is how are you paying it forward? I know you just, you've been launching your business and you've been out here doing big things, but, but what are some ways outside of just work that you are um, investing in people and, and, and doing life with people. Yeah. So something I learned from a mentor a long time ago is every single day I try to send two messages or phone calls to people just to encourage them. Um, and I, it's something that I pray about, like in my quiet time in the morning, God, who do I need to reach out to today? Who do I need to encourage today? 
and I just spend a couple moments, send a voice memo, send a text, send an Instagram message. And I really think that's a way to pay it forward because uh, oftentimes it will be, hey, don't know what's going on. And it, it more times than not, it's people I haven't talked to in a while. Um, but they'll say, oh my God, I needed that right now. Oh my, you know. And, and so that's a way that I pay it forward is just to uh, have a, have a set thing every single day that, Hey, I'm going to encourage two people. Um, and so, you know, what is that over 750 people in a year that I reach out to and, you know, it starts small, pay it forward. And at the end of the year, it's a massive amount of people that have been encouraged. Well, you know, I'm waiting on my text. <laughs> I'm waiting on mine. You know, I hope I'm way down the list. Just, just, just put me somewhere in September. You know what I'm saying? Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Specifically gotcha. on the 11th because that's my birthday. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> but great, great response. I think that that's good, and I think that's very practical. That's a practical way to engage people. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's such a great practical way to engage people and to be intentional with people. So, um, so what are you currently reading, man? Like, what are you listening to? What are you reading? I think this is a leadership, life, and legacy podcast and blog. So, what are what are some of the things you're you're digesting at this present moment? Yeah, so I'm reading a book right now called uh, uh, "Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters" because that's the the world I live in right now with a 16 month old little girl. Are you about to be a boy, yeah. boy dad in a minute though. That's right. That's right. <laughs> boy coming in. Um, and so all a lot of the books that I'm reading right now are either heavy business. So I'm, I'm reading Profit First um, to set up like all of the financials of my business, which I'd highly recommend to anybody that really anybody that has any kind of business or just wants to, you know, get the money right. And then um, I'm going through the Habits of Highly Effective Families, which is a, you know, adaptation of the, so a lot of the books that I'm reading right now is about family, is about yeah. being a great father um, and growing a business. And then here's, this is a book I read every day, Millionaire Booklet. Um, it's, it's about 40 pages. Mm -hmm. And so it's Grant Cardone. It's underneath my desk, you know, my little computer stand. And so I read through that every day. Mm -hmm. that's that's good that's good hey you keeping something for you that's gonna improve and make you a better leader you know i think i know this has nothing to do with what the last question i'm going to ask you but it's interesting that you talked about families because i think also people have to realize there's a business called family and Come if on. you can't run that business well i don't know what you're talking about running any organization and right. people sacrifice their bit, their families over their business and sacrifice their families over their careers and the things that they consider purposeful. And at the end of the day, yeah, you made a lot of money, but you don't have, your wife don't love you, your husband don't love you, your kids hate you, <laughs> you know. I, right. I, I think it's time for us to have both. Right. You know what I'm so saying? Quick story, if I can. Sure, sure. Good on time. I, you good, so brother. So 2018, God gave us a God gave me a word, and it was influence. And I was I was so excited. I was like, "Yes, this is my year. This is amazing." And upon quick and further prayer, God said, "I need you to influence 3,500 before 890." And I'm like, "Okay." Well, 3,500 is the number start to the address of my home. And 890 was the number address start of the church. And I was in that place, Lee. I was in that place where I was getting a lot of recognition. I was getting a lot of attaboys. And this was before, you know, my wife and I had our daughter that she was getting the scraps. She, I, I will say that, you know, as we say, like be hot, humble, open and transparent. She was getting the scraps. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize she was, but she was. And through counseling, through mentors, through therapy, um, got to a place where I said, you know what? I'm going to influence my family. They're the group that I love to influence the most. Um, and, and, and that really was a catalytic year for I think being able to do what I do now in the way that I do it is because for now three years, our intentional focus for me has been to influence those under my roof before anybody else. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and, and that's the most powerful one. So my last question for you, Kai. You've had all of this episode <laughs> to think about. Uh, what song would you use to describe yourself and why, my guy? Oh, man, you even gave me that. You gave it to me. So <laughs> I would say, um, okay, this is a wild card. I'm going to say, uh, I got a feeling, Black Eyed Peas. Okay, okay. That okay. tonight's going to be a good night. <laughs> that tonight's going to be a good night. And it, I think it's just what, when I close my eyes, the vision I see for what I get to do, I just got a feeling it's it, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And I feel like it's God ordained. I feel like the vision is clear. It's written down. And I got a feeling that it's going to be able to impact a ton of people. Well, Kyle, man, thank you for coming on, bro. Um, I have enjoyed this conversation with you. I'm going to go back and listen to this and watch this. It, what, what are some ways people can connect with you, man? You know, I, I, I don't think that this is a... Uh, just a little bit of time for you to come on here and just talk to me, but uh, I'm trying to get your business. Uh, so how can people connect with you and, you know, uh, sign yeah. up to get coached by you, bro? Yeah. I'm most active on Instagram. Um, so Kyle J Sullivan, my favorite um, app too, bro. To, yeah. I like Facebook. I think it, the engagement's crazy. Um, I don't think I'm professional enough yet for LinkedIn. Um, right. <laughs> so um, I'm really loving Clubhouse right now. So I don't know if you're on that, uh, but I've heard it, talk off. it. It it could be a social media disruptor. I'm just going to, I'm going to say it okay. here first. Okay. Um, and so Kyle J Sullivan on Instagram, you can go to KyleJSullivan.com. And then if you're wanting more like this, on the 29th of this month, Unleash the Champ Leadership Podcast launches. Okay. Okay. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you again, bro. I so appreciate your time and I hope people are inspired by this episode, my guy. Absolutely, man. Lee, thank you for what you're doing. And I'm, I'm honored to be able to be on here. All right, brother. Thank you for watching and are listening to this week's episode of Leading with Lee. If you have not done it yet, subscribe today on YouTube and all podcasting platforms. To get more information about me and what I'm doing, email me at scottconsultations at gmail.com or follow me on social media, on Twitter, and especially Instagram at Lee A. Scott II or Lee A. Scott II. Thank you for watching this week's episode. I really appreciate it. Much love and let's get started.